Becoming your best self. Becoming your best self. The point of no return. The point of no return. Becoming your best self. So, they're talking about the, uh, what's the word that they use? They're talking about the, uh, what's the word? Is it? The singularity, that's what they're talking about. The singularity. So they're talking about the singularity, a lot of people. They're talking about a lot of different stuff. But the singularity is really the mind of Christ. The ultimate singularity. They talk about there's different different singularities that happen with mankind, you know. But the ultimate singularity singularity is the mind of Christ. And so When you move to your best self and the point of no return, in other words, you, you don't look back. I'm not saying your, your flesh is never perfect. The flesh is nothing but sin. But it's your faith. They, they attack your faith your whole life. But there comes a point where there's no point of no return and you're not going to change your mind. You saw what happened to the apostles before the uh, day of Pentecost, uh, Pentecost, before they were sealed, they denied Christ. But after they got sealed with the Holy Spirit, they were willing to go to the cross with him, you know, be hung upside down. My point is, there's a point of no return, and there's a point of being your best self which leads to the singularity, which is the mind of Christ. And so the mind of Christ is the singularity to where you become your best self and you, you choose to go to a point of no return. You pass that point of no return and there's no stopping you from approaching the mind of Christ. It doesn't matter if you're in a war zone. It doesn't matter if you're in jail. It doesn't matter if you're in... Uh, communism, socialism, capitalism, doesn't matter if you're married, divorced, uh, doesn't matter if you're single, it doesn't matter if you're old, young, uh, doesn't matter if you're healthy, sick, there, there comes a point of no return that you've made up your mind that you are approaching that singularity which is the mind of Christ and you're not looking back. It's all connected people. It's all connected. And it's all connected. And you know it's all connected because they'll use terms like singularity. They'll use terms like Christ consciousness. They'll use, the world will actually use terms that point back to Jesus. Even when they get mad or they're shocked, they'll say Jesus. Joe Rogan will say, somebody will say something that shocks Joe Rogan, he'll say Jesus. Seriously, I've seen it too many times. Why does he say Jesus? He gets shocked by something. He says, Jesus. <laughs> he says it. Joe Rogan. You can see him say it. So they all point to Jesus, the singularity, because Jesus is the singularity. And so the technology, the, uh, the electrical, the mechanical, the the, the the medical, the uh, education, it's all, a, it's all approaching that singularity, which is the mind of Christ. And there's no stopping it. There's no stopping it because Jesus is coming back. And so the flesh mind wants to stop it because it, it wants a singularity, but it wants its own kind of singularity. It wants to worship itself. The flesh mind uh, doesn't want the singularity of Christ to appear on the scene which is already here it's always been here but it wants to hide it and shut it down and blind you to it but the singularity has always been here before the foundation of the world even 
And the reason they want to shut it down, the flesh mind, is because they want to worship themselves. It's all about me, right? They, they don't want to... See, the singularity will lead you to worship God. Let me put this on hold. I gotta put the trash can off the curb on the curb. The singularity is the mind of Christ. And as you approach the mind of Christ, you realize you're outside of time and space, and it's all a worship service. So everything becomes worship service. And every moment you're trusting God, you're walking by faith, it's a worship service. You know you're you've been bought with a price, your life is not your own. Your body's not your own. Your thoughts are not even your own. You have no new thoughts. Every thought has ever, every thought that has ever been's already been in the mind of God. There's no new thought. And if it's contrary to God, it's an anti-thought. It's already been. It's just an anti. And so, God wants all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth but he knows he he knows it's not going to happen you even know it you know that all people won't get saved you know that how do you know it if you're saved how do you know that because you have the mind of christ you know you know that not all people are going to get saved but the age of aquarius people they think they can bring all men all mankind into oneness and unity but they can't do it without jesus and there's going to be people in every age that reject Christ. They reject Jesus because they want to be worshipped. They want to be a, the creator. They want to usurp the creator. Instead of admit they're creatures, they want to usurp the creator and say they're the creator of all things. That's why the new age says, all oh, everything out in front of you, you created. It's a reflection of you. But you were created... And God gave you a, uh, a reflection out in front of you to cut you back to source. You're a piece cut off from source being cut back to source, which is Jesus. And so everything follows that pattern. Magnets, everything reflects back following that. His word won't return void. Everything follows that pattern. Everything's a piece cut off from source back to source. Source is God. Jesus is the image of the Godhead bodily. And so he made a way for us to follow in series and sequence and uh everything follows that pattern if you throw a boomerang about it comes back a magnet comes back sound reflects back what you throw you reap what you sow it reflects back what you sow you reap and so everything follows that pattern that when god spoke it all into existence source actually sent out a seed he spoke it out, which is the seed, the seed of the Word of God. Jesus is the Word. So God spoke. Jesus spoke. But through Jesus, God made all things. So when Jesus spoke, he threw out, it's like a farmer throwing out a seed. So he threw out a bunch of seeds. He spoke it. And by speaking, those seeds went out. Creation happened, and he's harvesting. There's good and bad there's wheat and tares. There's sheep and goats. And so he threw the seed out and he's harvesting. Now this is deep truth. This is, this is a parable that has uh, confused a lot of people, but I've, I've just explained it to you. The whole pie. I just gave you the, the, the archetype fractal of all things. Eve is a piece cut off, cut back in. The church is a piece cut off, cut back in. The material realms a piece cut off from the spirit being cut back in. Everything's a everything's cut off from source being cut back in. You got a river that has uh, it's flowing right, and there's little just little streams that go off the river, but then it evaporates, and goes back up, and it starts over. The cycle repeats. My point is, this is the fractal pattern of all things that Jesus spoke it all into existence and it spiraled out from him it spirals through him and it spirals back to him from him through him and to him and so there's your eternal 
communion, fellowship, stream, flow, whatever you want to call it. And it's happening all the time, everywhere, all the time, in all things. And people, a lot of, through the ages, people say, what is a magnet? Why does a magnet work? Even MIT is trying to figure out magnets, you know. It points back to Jesus and his church. It points back to God and his creation. It points back to God and the elect angels, the elect saints, the elect son. What is the magnetism? Magnetism, basically, from the spiritual realm, is that you're one with God. You were separated because of sin. But you're, there's a there's a there's a there's a vacuum, there's a void to pull you back to God. There's a there's a magnetism that pulls you back to God. Now that magnetism is designed that you go back to God through Jesus. But some people reject Jesus and they try to go back to God, back to source through their own works or their own goodness or their own knowledge. They're gonna find out some way. Besides Jesus, try to get back to God. They can't, whether it's Gnosticism, whether it's witchcraft, sorcery, really all these different cults and isms and witchcraft and religions and all that. The only, What it really is, is man's trying to get back to God through some kind of backdoor artificial way instead of Jesus. That's the secret to this whole thing, people. Mankind is trying to get back to God without Jesus, so he creates all these cults and these isms, witchcraft, sorcery, uh, gematria, uh, Gnosticism. Man is trying to get back to God through another window, another door, instead of going through the door, which is Jesus. That explains, see, there's a, there's a magnetism to pull you back to source, which is God. The gurus, they they want to they want to get back to source, so they sit in the corner and say, "Oh, mm, did that get them back to God?" No. Faith alone and Jesus alone gets you back to God. Jesus, there's only one mediator mediator between God and man. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. I just gave you the mystery and why all these cults and these isms and these works based religions and governments and programs and secret societies and even the corporations they all think about a corporation they all end up saying and doing the same stuff the school systems the cities the nation states they all end up doing the same exact stuff why because everybody's approaching that singularity but they're either approaching it through Jesus or they're e approaching it through an anti. It's like a mirror image. That's why there's a lot of people that talk about a savior. They want a savior, right? They want a president or a dictator or a, a leader of a nation. They want a savior. When a sh when a savior shows up on the scene, they go they they think this is Neo. They want a Neo, the one N E O O N E, Noah. They always want a savior, but the but any kind of savior apart from Jesus is the anti savior, and so they're looking for the same thing, but it's in an anti upside down reverse bizarro land. So my point is. I just gave you the whole pie in some object lessons that are happening in front of you at all times. This explains why you can quantum connect with some person or some object. You can go touch it and it comes back. Somebody that you knew 20 years ago, they appear, you run across, you run into them at a, at a store or something. I ain't seen you in 20 years or 10 years or however long. You run across the same path because there's a magnetism based on everything's a piece from source being cut back into source. From him, 
through him and to him. So Jesus, not, not only is it from Jesus, but Jesus sustains all things. By him, all things consist. He sustains your, your breath, your health, your body, everything. He's, it's, he's sustaining you. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead will quicken your mortal bodies. He's given you life and breath. In him we and in him we live and breathe and have our being. Breath and living and walking and by him all things consist. He's holding it all together. Every joint in your body is held together by Jesus. Every joint in the the mechanical parts in your car is held together by Jesus. Everything is held together by Jesus. It's a metaphysical thing. It's it's metaphysical, metaphorical, out of this world, meta, symbolic, spiritual, natural, literal. It's everything. People say, "Well, is the Bible not, not uh, literal?" Yeah, the Bible's literal. It's spiritual. It's metaphorical. It's symbolic. It's all of that. Can you do the the, the uh, literal interpretation? Yeah, the Bible interpret it will tell you the literal interpretation. But there is also a esoteric and a symbolic. But you have to rightly divide it, and God can reveal it to you. But it'll tell you when it's spiritual. It'll tell you when it's an allegory or a parable. You can see it. If 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 a, if a, if a writer can put it in a book, if there's such a thing as a metaphor, if there's such a thing as an allegory, if there's such a thing as an esoteric truth, then it's based on the Bible because that's the script of all things. That's the codex, the code of all things. Why do you think there's plumbing laws and electrical laws, the plumbing code and the electrical code? The code, the codex, the plumbing code is real. The electrical code is real. It's a codex. Somebody wrote a book and put it in a, in a, in a law format. And so if there's a plumbing code, an electrical code, and a building code, then guess what? God has a code, and it's this book, his codex, Bible, book. Bible means book, book means codex, codex is code. God wrote down the code before the foundation of the world, which is the book, which is the scripture, which is your script, and it's forever settled in heaven, and you can fight against it all day long, but, and you can run from Jesus and try to go through another way, but there's only one way. And Jesus is the way. That is the deal, people. So the singularity is Jesus. The singularity is the mind of Christ. The singularity is worship service. That's the singularity. 